A lot of people have enjoyed the video you made on how to start HRT for uh, women. So uh, that was a very good video, very comprehensive and short. But at the end of that video, you talked about uh, HGH uh, and the benefits of it. And um, so I got a few questions from different uh, women. Uh, so what should they do about uh, HGH? Uh, should they just uh, take the injections or what is your uh, take on it? Okay, so this is actually a pretty interesting topic. Well, everything is an interesting topic, right? So, so yeah, so let's talk about this. So, so growth hormone really is the fountain of youth and it, it gives us, it helps us build muscle. It helps us burn fat. It gives us energy. It helps us recover well from exercise. It makes us resilient. It helps our sleep. It helps our skin. So there really are a lot of benefits. However, I don't actually like to use growth hormone in my practice, and, and I will tell you why. So growth hormone is released in a pulsatile manner, and you get nine or 10 pulses throughout the day and night, and the biggest one is in the middle of the night, which of course is why part of why it's so important to get good sleep, right? So if, when people wake up in the middle of the night and eat, that's actually one of the worst things you can ever do. That's very, very pro-aging. So yeah, it's good if you are, are having a really good sleep around two or three in the morning. And also if you go to bed on a fairly empty stomach, those things are going to really optimize that, that nighttime size pulse, which is the biggest one. So, so anyway, that being said, uh, why is growth hormone released in a pulsatile manner? Well, because that's how your body wants it. That's human physiology. If your body wanted it to be a different way, it would be a different way. And so it's, it's like growth cleansing, growth cleansing, growth cleansing. And it's really important that you have those pulses and then those periods of, of, of cleansing. And so you, you don't want growth hormone to be turned on all the time, okay? Because again, this is not how the body wants it. And so, so anything that you take exogenously, uh, like any vitamin, any medicine, you're, when you take it, your level goes up your level stays up for some period of time and then your level comes back down. That is just how the, the drugs work, the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. So for most things like a vitamin D, let's say, that's fine, right? Because you, your body wants you to just have a nice high level of vitamin D all the time. So you take it, your level goes up, great. Like you take some more a day later and you know it's all good. But with growth hormone, you, you don't want it turned on all the time. You have to have those pulses. And so when you take exogenous growth hormone, you can interfere with that pulsatile release. And, and so you can get some, some good results in the short term, but you have to be really, 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 really careful because you don't want to have that turned on growth hormone for too long. So, and then you, cause you can end up with kind of some weird some weird side effects, uh, like some strange things can happen to your body. You can get like this, the thickened jaw and like a, a big hard belly. And like, some, and the, the biggest thing to be concerned about, of course, is, is the potential of getting cancer because it's, it's growth hormone and you, but you, you don't want to be in an unopposed state of growth all the time. Okay. So then what are we supposed to do? How do we get the benefits of growth hormone without using growth hormone? So we have a whole bunch of peptides that stimulate your body to produce and release more of its own growth hormone in that same physiologic pulsatile pattern. And these are called the growth hormone releasing agents. And the, these are what I actually recommend. So Samorlin was a big one that was being used for a long time. These are peptides. So Samorlin was a big one that was being used for a long time and we still use Samorlin. And then kind of the next generation after Samorlin is epimorlin. So epimorlin is really like what we use now and we combine it with something called CJC1295. Now, what the hell is that? So the CJC1295 helps potentiate the action of the epimorlin. So basically, if you if you were just gonna take epimorlin, it really only affects the, the, the pulse of growth hormone, you know, right after you take it or a couple of them after you take it. But so when we combine it, with the CJC 1295, then it, it enhances the, the uh, action and makes it longer. And so all of those pulses get enhanced. So, so I personally have been on, uh, well, I was first on straight epimorlin, but then, then they came out with the combination product. So I've been on epimorlin CJC 1295 on and off for close to five years now, actually. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, you know, you cycle it, you go on and off, but 
it, it's incredible. So you, you inject it at bedtime, five nights a week, at least two hours after your last meal. And that of course is because the growth hormone releases are enhanced by not having a totally full stomach. And so, I mean, nothing will happen to you if you inject it after you eat, but then you're not gonna get the complete benefits of it. And, you know, it's not cheap. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're really maximizing your, your benefits. And so it, it works out really well because you can do it something like Sunday to Thursday night, then you get the weekends off. If you wanna go out late, have some drinks, eat late, because you don't want to do seven nights because you can oversaturate the receptor. So I, I hope I'm not giving too much, too much information here. Um, but the stuff really is, is really pretty, pretty magic.